Remy? Okay. Yes. Hi, how are you? Good, Remy. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah, so now it's okay. I see the recording link now, so it's recording. Are we the only two? No, uh, Guruji is here, Rajba is here, and I see Mr. Singh also. Guruji, you're mute. Guruji, can you hear? Yeah, I can. Oh, okay. You can hear me too? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Namaste again, Raji. Namaste, namaste, everyone. Namaste. We slide and cut. Yes. Yeah, please, please, slide is coming. Yeah, yeah, he's there. Brother Pete is there. James is back. Okay, yeah, I think we're all back now. But also, yes, yeah, it's back. Okay, good. Let me see. Namaste, everyone. Welcome to the Interfaith Dialogue, our weekly program. Today is our special guest, Raj Bhushan, Esquire, known as Brother Oneness. He is my one of the close friends in New York City. Since 2011, we are working together for the community events through in different levels. Raj is originally from Mysore in Karnataka state in India. His wife is from Pakistan and they have three children and they all are married to girls from different countries. They are international family with different religions. Uh, Raj was the president of the Sai Baba group in Manhattan for a long time. Currently is, is the board member of World Yoga Community and he's working with the different groups and the NGO representative at the UN. I buy a floor for you. Namaste, everyone. Namaste. As we call, uh, greetings. I hope to share my journey as how I became Brother Oneness. Uh, my journey started back in India, back in 1952. I was one of the four children to my parents. My dad come from an agricultural family. We lived uh, close to the agricultural lands. My mom is just a housewife. They were married. When my dad was 20, my mom was 10 years old. First, my brother came on, came on board, Dr. Das. He graduated from medical school and came to United States since 1968. He uh, was born in 52 and then grew up in the rural, area of Southern India, where we are exposed to the caste system, all the rituals, all the, all the taboos and all that. So that was, that made a great impression on me as to why people differentiate between each other. My dad served in the local community. Uh, he was active in the local politics. He was the mayor. He was the mayor of our town of uh, about 20,000 people in that town. So he always reached out to different communities. We celebrated Muhammad Paikambar birthday, Buddha Jayanti, uh, the Jain festivals. It, it was, a, that was a good exposure for me, a nice foundation to show that we have to be integrating together. I grew up as a Hindu. My parents are Shiva worshippers. My life was moving along. I was not doing very well in studies. I failed the secondary exam, the 10th grade. So I was held back for a year. I was also failed the uh, PUC before you get to college. Uh, again, I was held back. But looking back, that was a blessed moment to spend two extra years with my parents. 
So when I was 20 years old, I reached out to my brother who was already in the United States. And I wanted to leave home. Parental conflicts had started, especially with my dad. So fortunately, he brought me to the United States in April 1973. So my journey started in Michigan, in Ann Arbor, Epsilanti. I finished my undergraduate studies there. During undergraduate studies, I had a chance to be part of the international students group and then I got exposed to various uh, culture. We have had many international festivals and also the Baptist Student Union tried to recruit me to, to be a Baptist and there were some festivities going on. Anyway, there was the exposure to interfaith harmony. Then I had a chance to come in contact with uh, Bhagavan Sri Baba in 1979 when my sister-in-law, my brother, Dr. Das's wife, joined us in the US. He, she introduced me to Satya Sai Baba. I, the devotional aspect was always there when I was growing up in India. We were living close to the Rama Mandir, a small, small Rama temple for about seven years. We used to do regular bhajans, that is like a group singing, going around a few streets. I, I would always carry the portrait of Rama. So that deep devotion, in a sense, was there. It was, a, it, it was just to, God had different plans for me. I never think, I never thought I would be in the United States. That was not my goal, ambition. I was happy to be a agriculturist live with my parents, that was my goal. But everything changed in 73 when my brother brought me down here. And I didn't speak English well, I hardly knew a few words. So I had to take English as a second language in, in the University of Michigan summer classes. And uh, with great difficulty, I got admitted to Eastern Michigan University. So all, all, this, long, all this time, God was showing that he is in charge. So you just with the plain faith. And my brother played a crucial role in building my self-confidence in uh, motivating me to reach the present stage. So when you finish my undergraduate studies and uh, masters, I put my heart and soul into this. I had to look up the dictionary, every other word to make sense of what I was studying. There's a lot of hard effort went into finished graduation. Then I worked as an accountant. Then I met my wife uh, through friends. She's from Pakistan. She's a Sindhi. She's a Hindu. She's also a Shiva worshiper. And as uh, Brother Dilip mentioned, we have three wonderful children. Now, I was a very active parent. I, my, with, my, with my own father, it didn't have close interaction. The old time parents, they don't express love the way Western society expresses, you know, giving an embrace, giving praise, motivating you every step of the way. So you did it right, be a cheerleader. That was not there. So it, it was, uh, I had all the spiritual progress I had to overcome, to forgive and forget and to realize that that's all they could do. And they were the best parents. I'm fortunate that uh, my dad taught me the value of character. He always said, if, if you lose money, you lose something. You lose nothing, sorry. If you lose health, you lose something. If you lose character, you lose everything. My mom was very instrumental in always praying in her own way, only asking for proper food and uh, good education. So all their blessings was there. I was able to help them when I lived in India. We were cultivating agricultural lands 
we had 10 acres of land where we would grow one season crop rice. So a lot of difficulties went through. It's all a blessing to appreciate how God can change the destiny and more importantly, the value of uh, family, that importance of family. So because of uh, my upbringing, family played a crucial role. I became more more active in all that. We are more like friends, all the three of, three of my sons. And we're also blessed with uh, five grandchildren. So we, I spend a lot of time with the family. That's, that's the peace begins with me. And then I have to be peaceful with our family members to keep everybody going in the same direction. So Sai Baba's teaching played a big role when uh, in 1979, I was in introduced to Sai Baba. In 1980, when I went back with my sister-in-law for a first trip to India, she took me to Sai Baba. I was fortunate to both of us have an interview. So those days, Sai Baba used to accept the garland. So in a private interview between two of us, I was able to offer garland to such a Sai Baba as a spot namaskar, he materialized vibhuti. And not knowing any better, I sat next to him. So the, the one day journey started from there, that he always preaches, he always talks about Divyatma Sarupalala. Whenever he begins his talk, he addresses each one of us as divine embodiment of love. The main teaching of Baba is love all, serve all, help ever, hurt never. So that was a very crucial interview. I, I hardly spoke anything. My sister had some worldly questions. Uh, Sathya Sai Baba patted me on the back. And then uh, Vibhuti, it was a silent communication, what can I say, looking back. I tried to go back many times to leave that memory, but uh, all I can say is that uh, he instilled that value of see the divinity within yourself and within everyone. So over those, uh, over the years when I, in 1980, you got married, I'm sorry, 1982, and my older son was born in 84, and then the middle son was born in 86, and the youngest son was born in 89. We lived in Oklahoma at that time. I worked for a company, oil company, and while working full time, raising the family, I was commuting 50 miles each way, four nights a week. We journeyed more than 50,000 miles to earn my law degree at night, working full time. So again, that's also a grace of Bhagwan, grace of God to put me into the profession I'm in. So everything was going fine. I had the initial touch of Baba, exposure was teaching, but next uh, 12, next 11 years we went by just busy with the family, 1980 to 1991. In November 91, I was laid off. Uh, we had uh, three children and a uh, housewife, seven, five and two year old, mortgage to pay. So one year was really difficult Actually, that journey from September of 1991, all of a sudden I started feeling, what's the purpose of life? You know, okay, I was never expected to come to the United States. I came here with many different paths. I became a lawyer now. Three children, what's there? So I was, that, that kind of set me on the stage of more intense spiritual pursuit. So I lost the faith, I mean, lost the job as a lawyer with three, three small children. Next one year was extremely difficult for me. I sent out 5,000 resumes and nothing, nothing really clicked for me. And uh, my sister-in-law, my wife's sister lived in New York. So we came here in uh, September, 1991, I'm still here. So when I, so the, Baba was absent for a period of 11 years from 1980 to 91. In 92, when I moved to New York, I became active 
in the local Sai centers. I used to go attend bhajans quite frequently. So one more year we stayed apart, able to move the family in 1993. So 1992, 1993, we had a commuting family with three small children, my wife. <clears throat> never let me down and uh, raise raise those ch children you know her, her contribution is more than my contribution for the way that they turned out so the co-parenting that was pretty helpful then in making all the adjustment to whatever way you can so in uh, from 1992 to present time here first i worked as an accountant for uh, bed Restoration Corporation, which is a foundation started by the Kennedys. That's in bed Bedford stuyvesant section of uh, Brooklyn. I think uh, Remy lives in that neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, that's a wonderful neighborhood. <laughs> so, I mean, it was interesting that I was looking for a job and I, you know, and then I was, I was only praying to Swami saying, help me make a living and you know, support the family. Uh, my philosophy has been to make a living, not a killing. The money is not the first criteria. The people, relationship, uh, solving the problems and then you know, keeping a promise. Those are all the values instilled by my dad. He made a honest living and then also the teaching of Satya Sai Baba. So I became an immigration lawyer in New York started representing clients from various parts of the world who are seeking refugee status. Where I am seeking refugee status with God, that is developing surrender, developing that God's will only prevails. You know, time and time again, God has proven that who is in charge, you know, you only make plans that makes God laugh. <laughs> so the, the the blessings uh, help to build up a good reputation among the immigrant community, among the immigration judges in New York, my immigration colleagues in New York. So no, not a single person can say, you took my money, you didn't do my work. So it, goes, it, 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 it uh, says a lot about the character part, character, which is essential to have a meaningful and uh, contented living. So during this time from uh, 2011 to 2015, I served as the president of the Manhattan Sci Center. We, Baba always preached about the interfaith. He's not, he is not here to profess any one particular religion. He, be the best Buddhist, be the best Christian, be the best uh, follower of Guru Nanak, be the best follower of uh, Allah. That's his yeah. teaching. So which, 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 which all led me to by the year 2015 when I was 62. Uh, then I said, I don't want to be an imam. I don't want to be a minister. I don't want to be reverend. So uh, through spiritual guidance, I became Brother Oneness. So wherever I get a chance, all the, inter all the media postings is something spiritual. I have spiritualized my journey, but I have realized who, the basic inquiry in spirituality as to who I am, where I have come from, where I am, where I need to go. Who am I, who, who am I that is, that I am sent by God to feel his love and share with family, colleagues, members of the larger community. Same way, everyone, the 8 billion people is sent, and sent to earth by the creator will worship by many, many different names, Allah, Buddha, Jesus, Mahavira, Indian gods, uh, nature gods, all, all names, all forms. Each one of us have a purpose. Each one of us here to fulfill our karmic obligations. 
based on our past actions, inactions, interactions, we are put on this earth to pay back, receive, learn a lesson. It's always the main thing is about being, being loving and forgiving. So where I am, where, where am I from? From God. Where is everyone is from? From God. Where we are, we are sustained this life through our life force within us. That's called Atma, soul, Holy Spirit, energy. Until that stays within us, we are active, we are functioning in this society. The moment that goes away, back to the source, God, then this body is either cremated or buried. So where are we going to go? We have to go back to our creator, Allah, Buddha, Jesus, Mahavira, any which we know. So now at the age of 67, so my focus is more and more about being loving, forgiving, and trying to be the best husband, best father, best grandfather, best co-worker. And then uh, the pledge during COVID-19 is for me is to have a zero second of anger and always be smiling, always be giving glory to God. And I deeply thankful to Guruji who we became friends almost 10 years now. And we have done many, many interfaith uh, programs through and then also in a small way, I'm, I'm able to be part of the World Yoga community, which I'm grateful to. So the priority going forward is more prayers, uh, more looking back and uh, asking for forgiveness, ex asking for acceptance and to let it go, all the, all the baggage, to purify my heart even more and more, so that uh, the feeling of inclusion, expansion, and uh, to be a small servant of the good Lord who has given this life and who has given this uh, innumerable blessings. You know? So thank you, God. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you, fellow travelers, uh, Sister Remy, Brother Kirpal, Brother Pete, Brother Gabriel, <clears throat> all the people on the on the call, and all the people who have Brother James, uh, Brother Victor, Brother Kurt, everyone, everywhere. My uh, my frequent posting is always may God bless everyone everywhere. So I'm just, uh, I hope uh, the entire 365 days, 24 seven, every cell in my body resonate that uh, principle of oneness of all. I hope uh, to be an example. I hope God will use me until my last breath to always be looking for positive, quality in each one. My philosophy has been never to confront, always cooperate, always talked about the money, that money is just a means to make a living. So just to be content with whatever God has given. And then uh, always promoting family harmony, all your dreams, come true, may all your prayer problems disappear, may you feel the oneness of all, and may you be a blessing to one and all in your path, and go beyond the end of the journey when we face our Creator, I will ask you how much love you have given and how much uh, a feeling of uh, pleasantness, inclusion have you given? 
and you know, that's my belief, that's my life, and I am uh, journeying home with those thoughts in mind. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks for listening to me. May God bless you abundantly. Jay Sairam. Uh, I have a question. I know you, you are an immigrant from India and living here. When you look back to in India, what do you think about India need to change? I know there's a lot of good things are there and same time a lot of bad things are there. That, that I like to hear from you. I think the feeling of inclusion needs to be promoted. I mean, uh, all the religious leader transmit the message that their faith, their method of worship, they, 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 are, they are identified closely with the body and then they're not looking to the soul. So the, the, I'm preoccupied with this notion of atmic awareness, soul awareness. I think that teaching needs to be propagated to, to share. Every religion says, know thyself, you know, truth shall make you free. Um, I, am, I am in the light, light is in me, and then I am the light. All those concepts are there. My, my feeling is that we have to make our teaching the most simplest way like a tweet, 140 character. If you don't get your message out within that 140 character, even less than that, you are losing it. So the constantly promoting this message of Vasudeva Kutumba, that not only just saying it, but show it, show it, you feel it. You, every, every religious leader, politician in India has to look that the same divinity lives in that person and everyone around. So there is no reason to cause harm. There's no reason to radiate negativity. So I, I hope and pray, you know, people like the Dalai Lama, people like Sai Baba, people like uh, uh, Amachi, you know, they, they transmit love, they, you know, they, they, they love transcend our boundaries, that's it. You just, uh, you just open up the channel, you know, get rid of all the negativity, ego, jealousy, anger, greed. It all comes from my opinion is superior to your opinion. Now, there's no such thing until the knowledge, every, God has created everyone, number one. So number two, that means everyone is right. Number three, no one is wrong. So if you go with that platform, with that attitude, at uh, wherever we are sending our message, that that goes a long way. So I hope I answered your question, Yeah. Any other questions? So you have a, sir, you enjoyed your fa a fascinating story. You have a very uh, interesting experience, Pakistan and India. Uh, were you involved in the Pakistan Sindhi community, Punjabi community? Were there any differences, the way things are done there versus the way in India? Uh, I, I don't look at any labeling. I, it's, it's, uh, you know, it could be India, Pakistan. It could be uh, Shia Sunni. It could be you know, Palestine and uh, Israel. I don't look at any of the labels. I go beyond I was, just, I was just curious because, you know, being India so diverse, you know, South, North, Central, all then Pakistan, Sindhi communities. So we got quite a diversity of things, although everything leads to one. I was just curious how things, people were interacting with each other. How you uh, found I, I only visited Pakistan one time. That was in 87. I enjoyed my visit. Um, it, it uh, before uh, before 9/11, you know, things were different everywhere. You, you you people feel your vibration. People feel that you like them, and you know they reciprocate that. So I never had an issue with uh, 
with anyone. I, I live in the Pakistani community where I live in Brighton Beach. We, about 200 yards from me, there's one mosque. Another 500 mm -hmm. yards from me, there's another mosque. Mm -hmm. I'm surrounded by Muslims and surrounded by the diversity of culture. You know, a lot of Spanish people live here, a lot of uh, Russians live here. Yeah, I, I just don't look for any labeling. Once you go beyond the labeling, is mm -hmm. Indian, Pakistani. So I, I don't, I, as I said, that I don't look, I, I, I'm not confrontational because I don't, I value your opinion. Uh, so of just course. Like Guru Nanak Dev, Devji said about uh, Ek Omkar, you know, that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. I, I, go, I enjoy going to Gurdwara. I do, I'm a frequent visitor here in Richmond Hill Gurdwara. I go to all places of worship. That I, any way, any which way you can glorify God, that's all, that's all there is. So, so I enjoy the, uh, in the cooking, in the food, in the culture. Uh, we know in our limited surroundings, we don't come in contact with uh, the problem situations, uh, unfortunately faced in Pakistan by the Sindhi community. And Sindhi community, wherever they have gone, they have prospered because they, they, they are business people, they get along, they find a way, a common niche. So I think that that, that uh, technique should be looked into. I mean, it just our, we can always look at life as, mm -hmm. look at the glass as, is it half full? Is it half, half empty? So our perception dictates our uh, interaction and uh, the quality of interaction, the feelings, and then the experiences drive from that. I yeah. hope no, I you're right. You're, you're right. I appreciate uh, you sharing your views. I, for example, you know, Verde Konkar is which is all inclusive, right? And the shavas which they sing. I mean, I I have many friends in uh, Sindhi communities, Punjabi communities, and other South Indian Assamese and all. It's fascinating the same word how they sing and how. It all leads to oneness, but it also gives you a lot of joy listening to them in different accents and different ways. They do the same thing. It's just pleasurable. Right, exactly, exactly. I mean, once you tune into that uh, <clears throat> divine new melodies, music, you know, then you transcend all. The mind goes away. When the mind goes away, then you are one. Yeah, of course. Yes, I have a question. Yes, yes, sir. What um, inspired you to join the Sai group, the Sai Baba group? What was the inspiration for that? Because there's so, you know, India is so diverse and there are so many religions or groups that you could have, uh, you know, been a, be a part of, but, um, you know, you were introduced to the Sai Baba group and, you know, you joined that group. What motivated you? What about that group? Uh, became an inspiration for your life journey. Uh, thank you for the question. It, it, it initially, I was attracted to the uh, that right away related from age seven to fourteen, seven to twelve, participating on. Uh, in, a, in rural rituals and most importantly enjoyed the singing so that that uh, the first uh, meeting i attended in st louis along with my sister in law that sing that singing went right into my heart i, I don't I, I did not make a conscious effort i was not searching for any group or organization and as i was exposed to teaching uh, Sat Sai Baba, it made sense to me. And then, you know, since Sat Sai Baba organization, there is no membership fee. There's never anybody ask you to pay for this or that. So you, you're free to attend the meetings, which consists of devotional and something, some teaching is uh, explained or maybe some discourse where Baba talks about it. And then they are also involved in various service projects, feeding me hungry, 
take part in now COVID-19 making the mask and distributing psychological counseling, various service aspect happens. So it was all inclusive. And then also at the same time, there's no fee. You know, you have to do this activity, you have to pay this much money. You, know, you, have, to, you have to, no, no such thing in, in his uh, main ashram in Puttaparthi, you don't file a single place where donation are encouraged. If you want to make a donation, you you go to the trust office and discreetly you do that. And so the the self inquiry questions as to who I am, who am I, why I'm here, where I need to go, that that tied in with the Baba's teaching. He always treated as one, and my own personal interaction, one and only time was that I was nobody you know, from a lower community. And then still he allowed me to sit next to him, imparted that silent uh, communication of uh, we are one, which took me many years to evolve into that, where I am now. So I value all groups and, you know, sometimes I come to UTS, you know, the, the theological seminary where you graduate from your PhD. You know, I, I go to mosques, wherever I, I have an opportunity, I participate and I, I'm an inclusionary. I, I, I don't um, differentiate you know, here and there. So just the more the merrier. You know? yeah. so, thank you. Yes, I do watch your, you know, your recordings. Um, you know, each time you go to the park, you know, you have these uh, motivational videos or little messages. So I've been listening to those a lot. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. My, my, my goal to everyone who is listening is, is to, and to share this knowledge free of cost. I'm not looking to make any money and try, not write a book, not to promote anything. I don't have a website, nothing. Wherever I'm put into, I want to share this and then encourage people to follow their own path. Go deeper into their own scripture, beliefs, you know, just consider the possibility that the other person is also right. Then you have, you have a whole new experience. The life becomes more joyful, more, there's nothing to complain. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Victor, do you have any questions? I unmute yourself. I have, I have, I'm sorry, I'm on the board. It was a pleasure to be said to you, brother. I mean, you know, what you say resonates in my heart, so uh, it's beautiful. Uh, I love the simplicity and the way you put it. Um, Victor, to, but to show the primary, what do you do? Primary, uh, you get out of religion, or you're the primary religion, and you step out of it because you see something bigger than religion. Yeah. If I may, religion is just a pathway, it's just, uh, it, it just a roadmap. You got to make your inner journey and you have to cleanse inside to open up all the possibility. And I, you know, I have a Jewish daughter-in-law, my grandson is Jewish, so I'm like, like Trump. I have a, I'm also, I have a Jewish heritage. <laughs> So I have a... You know, like try, my friend. You know, like try. <laughs> no, it's okay. God is prompting him to, you know, so that the, the goodness, goodness from everyone is is uh, coming out. So I, I don't fault him, and everybody has to play their role. I don't fault him. It's just that, uh, you know, it, it it there is a time frame. So whether it's another four years or November fourth, that's that's all. That's all. The people will decide. So, yeah, I can do sleep for it. So, you believe it's God's instruments? God is you. Sorry? 
may may I ask another question? Uh, please, please, please. You mentioned Sai Baba. Are you? Yes. Uh, I didn't quite follow. There are two Sai Babas, right? One. Shirdi Sai which, Baba, Sat Sai Baba. Which one did you refer to? I refer to both. Uh, it's uh, it's we we in you know, we, we uh, Sat Sai Baba followers uh, believe in Trinity. Started with Shirdi Baba, who united uh, Muslim community and Indian community. He would always yes. say Allah Malik, uh, you know, so and then that, that type of, and then it's believed that uh, Shirdi Baba took the Satya Sai Baba avatar. The next one will be Prema Sai, Prema Sai, uh, that is the <clears throat> Prema is love and to propagate that aspect of it. I don't attach importance to any of them, you know, all religious heads are prompting, prompting to feel that oneness. So that yeah. the ultimate is that, do you want to be happy? Do you want to be joyful? Do you want to be peaceful? You got to untangle everything, all the worldly knowledge. Only thing you have to focus on was the divine knowledge, what divine is saying, all are one. So black life matters, all life matters. <laughs> we all matter. The thing is, yes. we have to be respectful and then uh, be show a compassionate heart to anyone who's hurting. One of the actually, I, actually, I have a question. Sure. You said something earlier, but how do you think that we, all of us, we can take the people away from following the religion word by word and see the bigger picture? Uh, you see, it's for all of us to do the work. Do you know how we can do that to uh, have the conscious mind to go bigger, like Guru, like Sal Guru say, in the, in the, um, we both following the religion word by word to go in the higher self. Do, do you know how we can, I mean, you know, how can we all do that? Uh, all I can speak about, thank you for the question, uh, Victor. All I can speak for about my own experience that, you know, first there was a uh, sound, right? Then became word and etc. The word is just to uh, feed in the mind. He, Sai Baba always talks about you know, bend the body, mend the senses, end the mind. So the words, core teachings are there to direct your attention to who you really are. Once you start feeling that that divinity is inside as a soul, atma, energy, I don't know what the word in uh, Judaism for that, but something inside. I think uh, one of the Jew Jew Jewish custom is when person uh, passes away, they sit Shiva. Uh, they, you know, they're reading Torah. They all. The thing is, you have to go beyond the ritual. We sit. We, we sit Shiva when somebody dies. We sit, we sit for seven days. Uh, when somebody passed away, so we can mourn properly. Um, that's what Shiva means. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's I mean, Shiva is when somebody passed away. Okay, okay. Yeah, I my knowledge is very poor on that one. Again, I I, I have not read Quran. I have not read uh, Gita. I have not read. Uh, I I stick to my philosophy that just give me the essence. I am I'm, I'm the modern day spiritualist. I just want the core teachings. Let me follow it to the teeth. The core teaching of all religions are, we are love. So if you meditate on that and then you start feeling that the God has made a perfect creation, each one of us, you know, no one is, no one is uh, superior, no one is inferior. So the going beyond the words of the teaching is the key so, I mean, you got to graduate. The person has to graduate, right? They can't be in the high school or master's degree, PhD, beyond that. 
how do you be a professor of, professor of emeritus, you know? So what is the word saying? Can you follow it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? So it'd be, uh, it, you know, Judaism talks about uh, well, Shammai Israel. Israel, right? And they, oh, God is one, you know, and, and Muslims call it as uh, Allah Akbar. And then you know, we say, oh, no, 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 what to me? What difference it make? I, I I I chant all those names. Everything is okay. Thing is, who the hell I am? You know, pardon my expression. So if you keep inquiring, what Ramana Maharshi talks about, who am I? Keep who is asking that question? Who who is the mind is separating our true inner core? The everybody in even in yoga, the end result is samadhi. What is samadhi? Samadhi is that equanimity, that oneness, that kaivalya, that uh, I am one, the whole world is one, all creation is one. So it's just a process to pray to your creator, to enlighten, guide you, remove the barriers so that, uh, you know, when, when we stick to the core principles, then unless the person goes beyond which is also only God's grace. All I can say is God's grace. So only, only then the uh, fountain of joy opens up. You know. <laughs> Thank Peter, you. Do we have any questions? Peter, Peter. Yes, uh, I was taken by your comment about uh, during this COVID time avoiding even one second of anger. And I, I guess, uh, does, does something go off in your head when something controversial comes up and say, nope, and, and redirects you back? Or how, how, does that, how does that happen for you? I, I, absolutely, absolutely. I, and I'm the only human, you know, I eat normal food. <laughs> the emotions go up and down. The thing is, uh, feeling emotion is different than expressing the anger mm -hmm. like this morning my wife always goes down to help with the feeding of the cats we have about 15 cats my sister in has downstairs so in in in, in a rush she put her keys for downstairs somewhere and then she asked me to clean the furniture you know with the furniture polish so i did that while she was still here so when she went downstairs, she misplaced her key. So right away, well, why did you do this right away? <laughs> you do it now, after I was gone, now I don't find my keys and everything. So I had a I had choice, right? I had a choice to say, you took out the keys, it's, you know, you, you, or I could <laughs> start a World War II by simply saying, all right, let me help you look for it. So it just that uh, constant reflection of you know, that's part of the yama niyama, right? What is that, the do's and don'ts, you know, not to be, um, not to hurt anyone. I am sa, I am sa is that. So if, if a person, so we don't have to express it, even if you feel anger, anger comes big expectation, right? If, if the expectation is not, there is nothing to get angry. I mean, you know, so mm -hmm. like, I'm not angry with Trump, you know, I don't expect anything, you know. So his policies are, you know, it's just another, you just be a witness. So we, we, we don't have a vaccine for COVID-19. So all we can do is to improve our immune system. If you get angry even one minute, that for the or four rotation, I think it's like four days or four weeks or something. So then you have to eat a lot of supplements. I think Guruji can uh, expand on that, con that that point. So I I try to smile a lot. You know that that that, that helps me. You know if I'm angry, I cannot smile. <laughs> so that diffuses the anger. So. I grab a drink of cold water, just walk away, to take a walk, 
simple things you can do it doesn't cost anything to diffuse that anger you need to see what what's the reason for the anger so the next time that situation doesn't disrupt this you know where it's a business situation you know the client calling and expecting something to be done why is not done my friend got this uh, green card in 3 months so you are taking one year why is that so that how it all comes down to how you react you have a choice if you if you react by past conditioning you're likely to get angry is chances are high so if you just take a 10 second pause like your turn mm. those are things which have helped me that that's all i can say that's interesting that you said about the 10 second pause because there was a um a recent podcast i listened to that said if if uh people from inner city environments took that 10 second pause before they re- reacted the incidence of kids going to jail would be dramatically lowered and they had you know numerous examples of people's lives changed because mm-hmm. that one time they didn't take the 10 seconds you know that's interesting thank you thank, thank you, you. like sai baba has said that uh, if you intensely pray for 9 seconds you will have self realization i mean you, with all your all the senses all the faculty with the intense yearning asking the question who am i why i'm here where i need to go and if that becomes part of your daily inquiry that helps a lot what happens outside we have no control over it no the covid-19 almost 130000 deaths I, the social distancing All, all those things are there as to who is right who is wrong you know that's not that has no value to me all i can do is what what i am in charge of my own emotion that's i am the i am the king of my i am the ceo of my <laughs> the management property you know my thought process so if i can uh, i mean we can we keep on listening to all the discourses all the spiritual advice uh, self help books everything but you got to implement it to saying that okay how, how do i translate that into real life situation i mentioned about the misplacing of the key this morning you know, like that you know there's so many incidents happen during the day where we have a choice we have a choice to be act like divine and make the other person feel like divine or be the demon <laughs> Thank you, everyone else. Damn. You know. Sorry. Any other questions? Uh, I want to ask another question. So yes, I know you are three boys married to different girls from different community. Right. How do you feel about it? How your wife feel about it? uh the two different reaction thank you for the question my older son is married to uh, uh, he's married he's married to an american uh, from uh, german polish background she is a teacher wonderful lady uh, the the process for me you know to baba talking about uh, you know oneness and the way i look at spiritually how uh, you know these are all additional experience for me to show that we are one family we don't, we don't uh, put a label like you know, it in married indian so my wife's reaction was different so the older son is married to uh, you know catholic christian we had both uh, hindu wedding as well as catholic wedding my middle son is uh, married to a christian from eritrea and you know when he was the first one to start the relationship and have the children etc so many family dynamics they live they live you know so so that was a transition this all i opener then you know 
I had to ask myself, you know, if I'm pra practicing with teaching the oneness, you know, am I hang am I getting hung up on particular preferences and all that? You're just going beyond that. So the wife's reaction was much different. Of course, she she wanted uh, all three of them to marry <coughs> Indian, to have an Indian daughter-in-law or a Pakistani daughter-in-law. <laughs> So it didn't work out that way. That's all right. They are all wonderful people. So uh, Nataraj's wife, uh, <clears throat> she's also a lawyer. She's uh, she just was very blessed with uh, three beautiful children. So we have connection to Africa there, and then uh, in the she she is uh, Christian faith, and the younger son uh, is married to a Canadian a Jewish girl. She's also a lawyer, and then um, not not a practicing Jew. But when my grandson was born, you know, they did have that uh, <laughs> special ceremony and all that. You know, so it's a, it's 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 a joy to be experience what you read in books. You get to experience it in real life. So it it, it just if I, if I hold on to my old beliefs, which was not much, you know, I myself went out of my community and you know found somebody in pakistan from from pakistan to be married so i don't have any i don't have any uh, moral courage to say anything so i mean i'm happy that they are all independent they all made independent choices they chose their life partner so their choices are all excellent so the younger son has a we have a grandson. So we have five grandchildren. You know, life is enriching. It just you have to be inclusion. Oneness. And any other questions or comments? Uh cut is he there or? Okay, then I'll ask a no, no tea question. Okay. Uh, I know you have, you have so much family values even though you came to America. You had the love marriage, correct? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's it's Swayamvara. Right, Swayamvara. And uh, still, that, that, still... That's why I'm, Swayamvara for everyone. It's, uh, you, you make, you know, uh, right. you make your selection based on choices you have you know so i, I had my checklist and then you know <laughs> still we have so much options in new york city so many beautiful girls do you feel attraction to any girl this is not your question okay? yeah well i i will be truthful you know I, I go to the boardwalk right i mean I, you can look we cannot touch <laughs> <laughs> yes. so you have to you have to have that moral shield you enjoy God's creation in the beginning. That's okay. But, you know, you don't you don't act on your impulses, and impulses goes away. You know, as you, you know, just like uh, on Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Sharada Devi, you know, like 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 that. So I mean, you you do you? I, yes, I am attracted to beautiful girls, just which is human. You know, I'm only human. But I don't uh, let it evolve into any compromising situation. Let me put it that way. Yeah, I uh, ask this question because a lot of time people try to hide things. Oh, you, you, I am perfect. Yeah. So th this is a lesson for people, as we are human being, thoughts and attra attention, attractions. Will automatically will come how we will handle it yes. so you do that way you did very well you know i always observe people how they do things how they preach and they practice in their life a lot of time people just make go see what is not real or true yeah that's why i asked that question yeah well, well i i used to i used to i mean uh, 
if uh, the custom permits I used to hug people, you know, whether man or woman, of course, uh, you know, over, over a period of time, I became more cautious. Simply, it may send a wrong message and also it may, you know, it, it, it's not a good thing. So I, mm -hmm. I, my list of things I have, you know, express your appreciation, hug if, if appropriate. Of course, now the COVID comes, now <laughs> social distancing, it's automatically, <laughs> that part is gone. You, you, if I my, see my daughter-in-law, you just uh, elbow her from a distance, you say namaste, that's all. So our, our other family members, we, we don't, um, and the whole idea is to tra tra trans transmit that that uh, that uh, that other person is valued, not a sexual object. Right, right. Any other questions, comments, James? Lesson Namaste. I want to say congratulations, Guruji, as far as dealing with your uh, meetings and events for the world yoga community. I, I know that there was a lot of excitement that was going on. I was at the viewing yesterday, but it was like nobody there, you know. And um, it, it's just, you know, the, the culture issues in class is kind of like um, a little deep rooted today. And, you know, as far as dealing with some of the legal stuff that I'm dealing with, I don't want to, you know, drop it on your shoulders, but we, we're handling it. So I'm just saying thank you for the conversation. As far as the issue with Trump, he gets a thumb down from us, okay? The spiritual health is important, and he's not giving our society the spiritual goodness that we need. Now respecting life, now respecting the children, and a few other things. So, you know, we, we, we try to work for peace, but everybody has their own opinion and their values. But, you know, thank you for the time and the words that went on today. Thank you, James. Uh, and by, do you have a question to Raj? Do you have any question to Raj? No. So, seems like uh, uh, everybody is happy with the time with the Raj boy. No more questions. We'll wind up now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Raj Thanks boy. No, Gabriel, it's Gabriel. I think Gabriel is still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gabriel can. I, I didn't notice that point. Okay, Gabriel, ask some questions. Are you happy, Raj? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Do you ever sing by yourself aside from a group? Yeah, I do. I, I don't, I mean, uh, I used to enjoy group singing. I mean, uh, with the Sai Baba group and then with the uh, <clears throat> old your community. I mean, now, nowadays, I, you know, I don't, I mean, it's okay. I just give the chorus, but uh, yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I take a walk a lot in the neighborhood, in the board box, and all of a sudden some tune comes into mind, uh, you know, for example, why guru, 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 or, uh, you know, um, Heavenly Father, let thy will be done, and, and same as in, I'm forgetting the words now, but when, I, when, that, when that zone, you know, I, I cherish, you know, whatever the, 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 the mantra, or a couple of uh, lines from the bhajan, yeah, I do sing. That, that's one way to calm the mind and uh, to to make myself happy. To Beautiful. I used to see you in the Hare Krishna temple, and then I would see you in the Sai Baba group singing, Dear Lord, take my hand, Swami, take my hand. And I I used to feel so, so much inner happiness when I used to hear you sing because of the connection that you were talking about earlier. You were singing from that place, not 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 just singing to God, but feeling that. And that, you know, that, that's such a beautiful thing, Raj. Um, thank you, thank you. Thank you, yeah. 
uh, I want to inform uh, Krivayal Sindhi, uh, after this meeting, please uh, contact me on my Facebook Messenger because I want to connect about next week program. So we are going to wind up today's meeting. Thank you, Rajbhai. It was very yeah. inspirational uh, talk. This is where we share with the people through our personal life. Spirituality is very valuable for each person. God is not sitting upstairs. We have to think God is sitting with us. And we have to live in godliness more, more than a preacher. Be in action. That shows Raj's life story. So thank you, Raj, again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. God bless everyone. Good weekend, safe weekend. Peace, peace. Be safe.